Hey guys, how's it going today? Welcome back to another episode of Drawing with Dinosaur Comics. Today I have a special guest, paleontologist Scott Johnston, Mr. Dr. Professor Scott Johnston, as you guys know him on social media. Um, he does, you know, fossil prep as well as the advisor for TRX Dinosaurs, known for their puppetry. Anyway, um, do you want to introduce yourself, Scott? Do you want to? You have any other words you want to share? Well, uh, sure thing. Uh, well, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Scott Johnston. I am a fossil preparator and, uh, I guess, science communicator. Uh, but yeah, I'm a paleontologist, and uh, it's great to be on. And thank you for inviting me, Andy. Yeah, thank you. So um, let me just ask real quick. What is your favorite dinosaur? My favorite dinosaur is Utah Raptor, hands down. All right, so that is actually what I'm going to be drawing while I interview you. <laughs> it's going to be perfect. You can see it, right? You can see it. You're watching the stream too, right? Absolutely, I am. All right. So, Scott, what is your, what are your beginnings, man? Like, where, how did you get it into paleontology? So, I, my, my, my very beginnings. I mean, this is going to very much read like. Uh, like, like a... oh, at the beginning there was nothing, but um, <laughs> there was only uh, darkness. I, I, there was only darkness, and then there was a big bang. No, um, and then nothing happened much for 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 billions and bi for fourteen and a half billion years, and then uh, and then I was born in nineteen ninety four. Um, nothing of note happened before that, but um, <laughs> uh, so I got my start in like really loving dinosaurs and all things paleontology when I was two. Uh, it was actually partially due to some very unfortunate circumstances. Wait, um, okay, what are we, you gotta I share these were... circumstances. <laughs> it's like, like, how do you even remember it was when you were two years old? Or well, so old? well it, it wasn't that I'm remembering, I was just like, oh yeah, I dropped my ice cream cone and then I found out I love dinosaurs. No, um, it was uh, my, my mom's mother was, in the hospital and she was on her deathbed oh, and oh, so sorry we were in no it, it's it's fine um but we were in uh pittsburgh pennsylvania where my mom's from and we were visiting uh, and my mom wanted to see her mom before she passed away and i was two years old at the time and they were like hey let's let's not have the literal toddler here ruining the moment oh my god and it's it's, I mean, not ruining the moment, but it was like, give give mom some time with her mother yeah. before she passes away. Not have to worry about the kid. So, um, my dad took me to the Carnegie Universe, uh, the Carnegie Museum. The Carnegie Universe? And... <laughs> no, the university. It wasn't, it, it, like, it's part of Carnegie Mellon University, mm -hmm. but I'm not 100% sure of it, like how well they're affiliated. But, um, yeah, so took me to the Carnegie Mellon uh, Museum of Natural History, if that is what it's called. I actually, I haven't been back since. But, really? Um, no, I haven't. I, like, I ne the only time I ever go to Pennsylvania is when I'm driving through it to go visit my girlfriend in New York. So I don't really have, and that's mostly been during the pandemic. So, oh, yeah, I'll, that makes I'll, I'll sense. make a trip to the point. I've heard it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, so, yeah, we went there and checked everything out and oh my gosh i fell in love it, it was like my dad wheeled me in the stroller into the fossil hall mm -hmm. and it blew little two-year-old scott's brain and i was hooked ever since i i love dinosaurs ever since that legit sounds like the plot of like some kind of movie dude where it's like this is this is right? this is gonna be in your future biopic all right you know this is the first scene oh, yeah <laughs> they're wheeling this little baby like, scott I'm through the museum <laughs> Just like the the reflection of a dinosaur in my eye. Like, wow. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be your eye, like a close up of your eye, and then there's like a reflection of a fossil, right? It's gonna like pan out, and it's like you as an adult with the same reflection. Yeah, and then, <laughs> like and then faded. I have the full beard, and I'm, a, I'm I'm like on a dig with a pickaxe on my shoulder and stuff. And exactly. Now I'm played by Chris Hemsworth or something like that. 
Um, you got your whip, but... and Hans Zimmer will score the movie, according to Tia in the chat. Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Yes. Um, but, yeah, so th that's how I started um, really falling in love with prehistory. But And then ever since then, I basically, I was the kid who fell in love with dinosaurs and then never grew out of it. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of people eventually grow out of, like, loving paleontology and stuff, but I just didn't. Like, the farthest I got was, at one point, I thought that it might be cool to be a uh, to be a herpetologist, because I do love reptiles and amphibians as well. Mm -hmm. But then I basically kind of, like, stepped back, took stock, and was just like, hey, Scott, that's just you wanting to be a paleontologist, but you want them to be alive. <laughs> but alive, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a good point. So, yeah, but... Um, so I, I got started kind of, well, not necessarily professionally, but I got started working in the field of paleontology when I was 14. Mm -hmm. uh, I started volunteering at the University of Michigan Museum of Natural, well, University of Mich Michigan Museum of Paleontology's vertebrate fossil prep lab. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad worked at the University of Michigan. He was an administrator. He worked at the, uh, in... Wow, why am I blanking on everything tonight? I can't talk. But uh, he worked <laughs> in pretty um, facilities and operations. Mm -hmm. So he managed, as he put it, he managed the the buildings and what goes on inside them. Mm -hmm. So he knew the head preparator at uh, in the prep lab, Dr. Bill Sanders, and he mm -hmm. knew the, the head of the museum, uh, Dr. Phil Gingrich, and asked them, like, hey... I have a 14 year old son who really likes dinosaurs and he's just sitting around the house during the summer. Can you, like you guys have volunteers for students. Mm -hmm. Can he come in and hang out? So he's just not just playing video games all the time. Mm -hmm. And they were like, yeah, absolutely. hundred mm -hmm. percent. We'll give him a, we'll give him a shot. And I found out later that my dad was like a hundred percent convinced that I would last two weeks why this is like this boy has no discipline is that what your dad was thinking no 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 it, it was less of that and more um like he's gonna find out that this stuff takes ages it, it's, it's not indiana jones it's not jurassic park it's not what you see on the documentaries and stuff where mm -hmm. it's like you find the fossil out in the field and then you wrap it up in plaster and burlap and then it like there's a jump cut uh, and like a little montage of like someone scraping away at it in a lab and then it's the whole thing assembled in the museum like you it's that, not it's not that's that. not how There's it works oh no no i'm sorry i have to like show the man behind well i i guess i am the man behind the curtain in that analogy but uh, <laughs> um so yeah it's it's tough we in fossil prep we don't we don't like to use, as as I've heard my mentor at the AM and H, uh, Amy Davidson, say mm -hmm. we don't like to use the word, that being tedious. Mm -hmm. But it can be, sometimes. Uh, but yeah, uh, joke's on you, Dad. Almost 14 years later, and here I am. But <laughs> yeah, it's it's been... It's been a fun time. Uh, yeah, I started working at the University of Michigan. I was volunteering in the summers and then eventually got into the University of Michigan and I kept working there. I kept working with Bill and helping out the other students and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember that like it, it, it sunk into me how much I actually knew when I was like a sophomore mm -hmm. there. And so I was like 19 or something like that. And Bill came up to me. He was like, "Hey Scott, we have a we have a new person in the lab. I forget their name exactly, but it was like, hey, it's it's this person. Uh, they got their PhD from here. They're going to be a postdoc visiting at the moment. So uh, why don't you show them how to do fossil prep?" Mm -hmm. like, Wait, I'm 19. I'm teaching a PhD. I'm te teaching a PhD. Hey, there's a lot prep? you can. There's okay. a lot you can learn from from teenagers. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. and. I mean, at that point, I'd been doing it for like five years, so mm -hmm. like I had I had discipline under my belt. But yeah, so uh, and then like I worked at the University of Michigan through all the time I was there, um, which was five years because wow, college is tough. Mm -hmm. um, and then I 
kept working in paleontology, uh, mostly at Michigan. I uh, helped with our museum was moving. So I had uh, I was actually hired on by the move team mm -hmm. to be as, as they kept jokingly calling me uh, uh, move team special operations that uh, I took on the tasks that were too dangerous and specialized for regular movers to do. Mm -hmm. And so, like, they would put me on, like, hey, here's a box of unsorted crocodile vertebrae uh, in the museum. Can you organize them and cradle them and stuff like that? And then we moved that all to an off-campus building because our collections facility at Michigan was in a converted crawl space in the basement of a hundred-year-old building. That sounds incredibly dangerous and not something I'd want to do <laughs> or be. You would be shocked at how common of a situation that is in a crawl space converted crawl space you could walk around in it oh, okay i thought it was like literally like put the fossil in there you gotta like solid snake crawl your no, way no, into no, no, there no, no, no. It, it used to be like that but then they dug it out a bit more mm -hmm. and like put in concrete at the bottom that's uh Yikes. <laughs> That's scary. Oh, it was yikes. It was yikes. It was at least one yike. It was it was a bad time. I mean, it was a shockingly okay place to have a fossil prep lab. No, the prep lab was upstairs. To have a fossil collection space because uh, -huh. uh being having it be in the basement, it was actually like just because it was underground, it was like the the humidity was weirdly very consistent and so was the temperature mm -hmm. uh it was always just a little bit too cold to be comfortable and a little bit too dry to be comfortable at I mean, all times throughout the whole year to be fair at least it wasn't like too like i don't know like too hot because if it was too hot then it's like you know no you, you, yeah. as someone once told me you can put more layers on but you can't take more layers off Oh, yeah, that was... Okay, so fun story with that. Um, my second year when I was volunteering at Michigan, I actually, uh, it, was, it was my first, like, big project I helped work on. It mm -hmm. was a... Uh, it was a cast of uh, the 36 million-year-old whale Basilosaurus Isis. Mm -hmm. And uh, because uh, our professor, or, well, the director of the museum at the time... Uh, Phil Gingrich, he was a whale expert and he found this one, like, it was like 20 kilometers south of Cairo or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we were, and he brought it back from Egypt and we were making like four, five copies of it. We were, we were casting it like four or five times and mm -hmm. I got to help make the molds for that because I was there at the perfect time for all that. And we were do it we were doing some molding and casting and we were upstairs and the heat broke because actually no we didn't have heating in that room yeah no no we didn't have cooling in that we sorry we didn't have cooling in that room it was so hot it was a heat wave hit and it was a billion and a half degrees mm -hmm. and we were all wearing like lab coats like this because we were we were like sanding fiberglass and resin mother molds mm -hmm and getting covered in this itchy, awful, terrible fiberglass dust. Mm -hmm. And it was so hot that we were constantly like debating of like, do we want to take off the lab coats and be marginally more comfortable, but then get covered in fiberglass dust and be itching and miserable? Why don't y'all just do like, we leave get naked on? and or like, you know, get shirt, half shirtless, half naked and, you know, just... <laughs> Just dudes being dudes. No. Oh, Jake. Oh, I forgot you're a minor. <laughs> it's like just dudes being dudes, man. <laughs> just dudes being dudes. Me, Mike Cherney, and ah, uh, everybody. Oh man. And Dan Erickson. Yeah, that's who it was. It was me, Mike, and Dan. But uh, yeah, there's a there's a picture of me online of uh, like on on my Facebook of. I thought you were about to say shirtless. Summer. There's a pic of me online shirtless. Oh yes. <laughs> Of little 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 baby Scott wearing a respirator up in the in the lab upstairs on the fourth floor of the Ruthven building and or uh -huh. fifth floor of the fifth floor of the Ruthven building and 
Yeah, that was that. Oh, that was a nightmare. We we got it done though, and it looked gorgeous. It got featured in the August 2010 issue of National Geographic. Nice. Fun. How long did it take? Mm -hmm. Oh, years. 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 Uh, I got yes. there like I got there at the tail end of the project. Got it. But oh god, it took so long. So so long. It was gorgeous. It was a beautiful, beautiful specimen. Like we we had one on well we do uh, even though the museum moved we still have it on display so we have one on display in our new museum well we had it in the old one we now still have it in the new one um we have at least one in the collect one cast in the uh, of the whole thing in the collections there's one in the collections in cairo and i think they have one on display too mm -hmm. so at least, at least, we might have actually made more. But yeah, couldn't really take many layers off in that situation, and <laughs> you start losing PPE at the point. But <laughs> dang! So yeah. basically, doing fossil prep is kind of like, would you say it's like the underdog job of paleontology, like the unappreciated kind of like low key job of paleontology? It is a bit. It's it's that that and collections managers are absolutely the unsung heroes of paleontology um, because like without us, like nothing gets done. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, the researchers, they, they get all the fun credit and stuff. They get their names on all the papers. They get documentaries and stuff with them all over it and stuff. And they get advisors for movies and stuff. But all of those fossils couldn't be the basis of what they're working on unless someone like me pulled them out of the rock and cleaned them up nice so they could actually get the information out of them and mm -hmm. someone like a collections manager didn't catalog it in a way that would actually be useful for science and people learning more about things mm -hmm. so yeah I, I would say that we like, I wouldn't necessarily say we're more important or anything by any means but you're an but... important wheel in the cog of you know science essentially Absol absolutely absolutely um it's yeah it's it's important well, well then sir th thank you for your service <laughs> oh my god i haven't heard that since i was in rotc for a year ROTC. <laughs> i oh. was yeah, yeah man. I, I i'd walk around campus in uniform because we had to do that on thursdays uh -huh. and then people thank you for your service it was like i I didn't do anything. I'm just wearing the uniform and got yelled at by some lieutenant, by some Marine Corps lieutenants. Like, that's not service. <laughs> Thank you for running around the football field several times today. <laughs> In my case, very slowly. I was you, a terrible runner. I'm so bad. You weren't an athlete. Hey, it doesn't matter because you know what matters in the field is like how long you could last, like walking around. Am I right? Yeah, I'm I'm a pretty good endur I'm I'm pretty good in endurance. I can walk around for a really long time. I was a swimmer. I was on the swim team in high school. So. Nice. But that doesn't come up much in paleontology. Do you do you think that your like um your athletic like pursuits in high school like helped you get into the field? I probably well I I would say that it's it's less of like being on swim team in high school and more of uh all the stuff i did in boy scouts mm -hmm. uh i'm an eagle scout i was in scouting since i was in kindergarten mm -hmm. and so all the camping all the backpacking and all that stuff uh that that really helped that was very beneficial and i learned a whole lot i i definitely had a bit of a leg up on some other on some other people when it came to camping and field work and stuff like that mm -hmm. like uh when i did my first field stuff in uh, my my first field program uh there was a field school that was required for uh, my major at michigan and i elected to not do it through the university of michigan's program mm -hmm. because i'm I'm special and I want to go somewhere special and and I worked with uh uh actually I went through University of Washington to uh 
out to the Hell Creek Formation, where we mm -hmm. find a lot of the big charismatic American dinosaurs. I mean, I, I'm sure people on here know. We've got like your your T Rex. Where is it over there? Um, your T Rex, your Triceratops. Your I mean, your the All Stars basically. Yeah. Hell Creek. Yeah, yeah. You get your American All Star dinos, and so I, I worked with. Uh, it was Greg Wilson out there through University of uh, University of Washington, and I was the only student who didn't have their tent either get blown away by the wind or collapse at some point during the the month we were out in the field. Mm -hmm. But that was that was a fun time. It sounds like it sounds like ah. it sounds like being a paleontologist is like half rigid like amounts of research and the other half is drinking a lot of alcohol and having fun with your friends <laughs> part of, uh, yes yes i mean the drinking is absolutely not required and uh i know some places are really trying to move away the, the, there can be a very unfortunately problematic like alcohol culture in a, a lot of the sciences especially a lot of the geosciences but um <laughs> A, a lot of it is it, like it, it's fun to just hang out with people. That's it's fair. Blast. And, and like, no matter what you're doing, um, like, man, telling stories around the campfire uh, out on a dig is so much fun. Hearing dirt about all these other paleontologists that, like, oh, I heard about them. On, it was like, oh, I saw that person on this documentary or this person re wrote this book. And then just have the professor just lean back, like, lean back stare longingly into the fire just like oh no and then tell a very horrifying story about that person just, like, oh, <laughs> just to make no. you feel bad oh, just funny. like oh i didn't know they were like that oh i know you've told me a lot of uh a I lot have. of interesting I stories have. that we cannot share on here unfortunately no we cannot <laughs> but um I'll very, I'll very much put it as just don't, don't meet here, don't meet your heroes, kids. Yeah, but you say about anyone, <laughs> don't meet dinosaur comics. I'm not your hero. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I try to be a good. You're influence. my hero. You're my you're hero. Absolutely. Scott. Just two bros being bros, man. Two dudes <laughs> being dudes. That's but that's like, crazy. Like so. Oh yeah. In regards to other stuff, other facets of like your work, like for example, like with TRX, what what exactly do you do? for TRX and how's, so, how's that going? I'm partially scientific advisor, partially like outreach person. I wouldn't say I'm an outreach coordinator or manager or anything because I don't manage anybody. But um, mm -hmm. so part of it is like um, uh, Keegan will message me just like, hey, I'm working on a new puppet and the client wants some coloration on it what can you tell me what, that would be plausible mm -hmm. uh and i can talk a little bit about like well it's supposed to be a deinonychus or a velociraptor uh they were most likely ambush predators because even though velociraptor's name means speedy plunderer they were not fast animals and were the, very much not built for speed. No, they weren't. They, they weren't. weren't like the ty the no. small dromaeosaurs were not built for speed. They were very slow. Really? Like they they could move fast if they wanted to, but they weren't like like veloc like in Jurassic Park when like Muldoon sitting there like how fast could they run? Oh, they could get cheetah speed. No, uh, no, no, none of them. No, not even a little bit. Okay, so I'm assuming. Let me get. Let me just take a guess. They're like about as fast as let's say like your average like mid-sized bird. Maybe I will. And ostriches like. Uh, well, the thing is that all of our ground bird. You mean like the ground birds that we? Yeah, have like today? let's say like a like a secretary bird or not a secretary bird, like like a road runner or a chicken. Uh, so. Or turkey. Well, the, the the thing is, maybe a turkey would be a more apt comparison. But the 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 problem would be that all of the birds that we have today that are completely grounded, like the the ratites, the the ostrich, the emu, the cassowary, the rhea, and I mean mm -hmm. I guess the, the kiwi, but it's the kiwi. <laughs> but uh, they are. They're all very, they're what we say in the sciences, cursorial. They're they're adapted for running. Mm -hmm. 
and the dromaeosaurs were not like um oh actually it's, it's perfect because we have the um the skeletal up on screen yeah, so uh, so I, I can use that a little bit so um on the skeletal there we have the perfect we have the the femur that comes down from the pelvis so that's the big long bone we have all the same bones uh, they just have slightly less of them because they only have four toes. We have three, mm. and we don't have claw bones like they do, called ungules. So um, you have the femur coming down from the pelvis there. Then you have the tibia and fibia that make up the the shin, and then you have where you'll sometimes hear that like, oh, chickens have backward knees or something. That's mm -hmm. not their knee. That's their, it's their ankle. Uh, yeah, it's down there ab above the claw right there. Mm -hmm. So below that are the metatarsals. The metatarsals are what make up, they're something that we walk on, but dinosaurs don't. They only walk on their toes. That's called digitigrade. Mm -hmm. And we walk on our like whole foot and ankle. That's called plantigrade. Mm -hmm. And so you can see on there that the, uh, the metatarsals above where the foot is. And one of the ways, it isn't necessarily that we determine the actual speed of an animal, but it's a way that we can tell if it was a fast animal or not, is look at the ratio of the metatarsals to the tibia fibia. And if they have really long metatarsals, that seems to be how you, for lack of a better term, build a fast animal. Okay. So this and, Utah raptor right here yeah. was slow, is what you're trying to tell me. <laughs> he was real slow. Like, yeah. But, like, if you were to compare that to, like, the skeletal of an uh, Ornithomimus or yes. something like that, where, like, they have very long metatarsals in mm -hmm. relation to their tibia fibia, and in addition to that, they have a... Actually, I see someone in chat. Or a dog? Yeah, kind of a dog, but they're quadrupedal, so it's a little bit different. Um, but they do have long metatarsals, and that is really good adaptation for that. But, uh, and... Dinosaurs that are very cursor cursorial, they're very adapted for running, have additional adaptations. Like they have, um, their metatarsals can be modified. Like mm -hmm. the, in uh, Ornithomimosaurs, they have uh, a feature that's called, oh, wow, why am I, why am I blanking on it? Why am I blanking on it? It's where the, the middle metatarsal is actually pinched between the ones that are on either side of it so it kind of looks like it gets pinched out kind of like a kind of like yeah. this like a like a like like three fingers coming together is that what you mean yeah ki kind of kind of but it's it's more uh let me see if i can bring it up i'll, I'll, I'll just hold up my phone because i'm professional i'll do that <laughs> um and i'm also totally looking up what it's actually called because i completely blanked on the actual term name for it it's called uh metato I don't know. <laughs> it, um. Oh, where is it? 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 It's. Uh, oh, where is it? Arctometatarsals. There, there we go. go. Um. So let me see. Actually, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be very meta, and I'm gonna bring it up because you illustrated it in your Ornithomimosaur comic. Mm hmm that you have it perfectly in here. I got lucky. That wasn't intentional. I didn't know. <laughs> well, you can totally see. Oh, it. that it's part. Awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I see what you mean now. That part. So you can see. Um, yeah. Um, so you can see it on here that like you can see the middle metatarsal between the ones that are pinched on the side. Yes, yes. That kind of it gets pinched out into a very thin bit as it goes up to the top. Mm -hmm. It's called arctometatarsal. Uh, that's called an arctometatarsal or the arctometatarsal mar arctometatarsalian condition. And that is thought to be an adaptation for shock absorption. Mm -hmm. And we see that in dinosaurs that are theorized to be uh, that are theorized to be very good runners. Um, we see that in the Ornithomimosaurs. We see that in the really weird Alvarosaurs, like Mononychus and Shibuya, like you mm -hmm. illustrated before. Uh, we see that in some Oviraptorosaurs. We actually see that in Tyrannosaurs. It's one of the diagnostic features of Tyrannosaurs as well, which so doesn't that's... necessarily mean that... Yeah, go on. 
I was gonna say, so that, so that means Tyrannosaurus were ultra fast, or just like at least as. Because I remember when I was doing my research for the comic on that, juveniles mm -hmm. were very much um, Ornithomimosaur like in terms of like their, like how their feet were, but as they got bigger, mm -hmm. obviously their morphology changes. And they, yeah. have, they have to add, like, you know, because they're, they're giant, they're huge, right? So you can't exactly that, run that, could be that part fast. Of it. That could absolutely be part of it. It could also be that essentially it was something that. It, it could be a feature that was just retained throughout Tyrannosauria, mm -hmm. that it was the early Tyrannosaurs had uh, the Arctomendus harsals, and as they evolved larger, they essentially just became used for other things. That uh, Because it is theorized that they are for shock absorption, it doesn't necessarily need to be something that is just for running that mm -hmm. like shock absorption can be really good if you're really heavy as well. So it could just be that as Tyrannosaurs got giant, the, their specially adapted uh, ankles let them get giant more efficiently mm -hmm. without as much of a difficulty in moving around as like the Carcharodontosaurus and larger allosauroids might have had. That's interesting. But... Also, wait, so the larger yeah. larger allosauroids, so just so it's slightly off topic, the larger allosauroids yeah. were not fast either. No, they were not fast, and I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure how much I can actually talk about this because I'm not sure if this paper is published. But okay, just don't mention were... it. Don't mention it yet. Okay, <laughs> to okay. get in trouble. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah. Okay. So there, there's there's some other things that are interesting about their locomotion in comparison to tyrannosaurs as well that I will not mention because I don't remember if it is published or not. But it was something I saw at a paleo conference like. God, like years ago. Oh, okay, yeah. So, well, let's let's not get let's not put this okay. <laughs> this out there yet. But um, okay, so that's that's interesting. So I don't know. I guess it's because media gets everything like ultra fast. Like for example, like I don't know if you saw Camp Cretaceous, and for the for no, the wow. record, I absolutely do not like Camp Cretaceous. I like. Does that sound messed up? I hate watch it. <laughs> you know what I mean? When you, oh, no, I hate I watch it. I want to do that too. I, I want to like. I actually have. We've had off and on plans with a couple of my friends from the American Museum of Natural History that uh, we want to just like pour ourselves a couple of drinks and then just watch Camp Cretaceous. Okay, uh, Camp Cretaceous, and partially because I also heard that there's like shockingly violent. Like it, it's shockingly violent for something aimed towards kids. Um, is it? I mean, for me, it felt like it was like about as violent as watching, I don't know, G.I. Joe Transformers. Okay, you know? oh, okay, fair. But I mean, it, it, I mean, it's not a Studio Ghibli movie where people's arms get ripped off and stuff. But... That's true, that's true. <laughs> God, it... I remember the first time I watched like, uh, like Princess Mononoke and like, the guy gets both his arms shot off with an arrow and he was like... Oh, yeah, I remember God. that. Or like, like the demon boar. <laughs> I was like, holy crap, this, this, like, I was a kid too when I first saw Princess Mononoke, and I was, I was just yeah. like, you know, I'm just watching, I, you know, because when you're a kid, you think all cartoons are like, you know, <laughs> Mickey Mouse and Goofy mm -hmm. and, you know, Bugs Bunny and, and stuff. And then I see Princess Mononoke, and I'm just like, wow, what is this? All of a sudden, this, this, you know, this deer gets his head chopped off and then becomes like a giant god and like a bunch of crazy crap happens. I was like, holy crap, what is going on? But, um, yeah. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> to transition back into dinosaurs, how do you feel about Jurassic yeah, Park? Um. Oh, so I I love Jurassic Park and I love the Jurassic franchise. Like, I mean, that also might come as a little bit of a shock to you from watching Fallen Kingdom with me a while ago. But um, no, I, t I totally understand. I I love Jurassic yeah, I Park. I don't I, love Jurassic like, World. The, I don't either, but I enjoy it, and I, in, I, I see it as a really awesome thing that, like, so many. I talk to so many kids that they watch Camp Cretaceous, they watch Jurassic World, they watched stuff like that, and I mean, it is very slightly as a paleontologist uh, disappointing to have them say. Hey, my favorite dinosaur is Indoraptor. What can you tell me about it? I'm like, made up kid. It doesn't exist. <laughs> favorite dinosaur. 
but um uh like it, it's getting people interested and it, like that's all it really needs to do but um yeah jurassic park is one of my favorite movies i absolutely love it it's incredible like even outside of I, i'm also i'm actually not sure if we've talked about this that very much but i'm a huge movie buff i love movies like every year i at least try to watch everything that's nominated for at least best picture uh-huh no i, I think um, we, we talk about movies a lot but um we don't exactly like yeah. talk about like the art side of movies yeah like I lo- like I love the filmmaking behind Jurassic Park 2 and like the stuff around the dinosaurs. Like mm-hmm. one of the most incredible like one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie that always just touches me and more and more every time I watch that movie which is like, literally a billion times at this point is just the little quiet scene of Ellie and Hammond like eating the ice cream and just talking about his flea circus oh definitely stuff. yeah that's like, a that's a great scene god it's so good and then just the little the just like at the end when like they're at the like hammond's realizing that like his pursuit of the pursuit of this dream has killed people and possibly killed his family members and mm-hmm he's sitting there like regressing into literally being a child by just like well we have to eat all the ice cream and stuff and uh chilean sea bass <laughs> that's one chilean line i really bass. remember yeah. chilean sea bass we have some really good yeah. chilean yeah. sea bass yeah well, fun fact not a sea bass not from chile but um <laughs> it's a marketing term but uh uh so like and, and then the, the camera just like has that wide shot of him sitting there and just like the very quiet sad just spare no expense and it's uh-huh. just chills every time just it's so good and like the minor little things about how all of the characters have are color coded so like even if you don't necessarily know who's who you know that uh Sattler's in pink and uh Grant is in blue and Hammond's in white and Malcolm's in black yeah yeah uh like like subtle little character things and how Timmy and uh Timmy and Lex are in similar colors to Sattler and Grant because they're tied to them through story and like like cool little minor filmmaking things that I just love about it but then like and I do love the other ones as well like they're like they're bits and pieces of the second one the lost world that i absolutely love that are just incredible do you not you do not like uh, um the lost world jurassic park as a whole not really like i have i was having a conversation with one of my friends a while ago and we put it in the context of like i like the i like the lost world jurassic park like he likes the star wars prequels (laughs) <laughs> the, that's that's kind of messed up <laughs> no but the, it's like i have nostalgia for it i grew up with it i acknowledge that there's a lot of things in it that are really flawed but a lot of things in it are really great as well mm-hmm. and like if i forget things like the raptor gymnastics and like uh, some character motivation or how i always manage to forget that vince vaughn is in that movie every time i end up watching it um, hey vince vaughn <laughs> hey vince vaughn hey it's vince vaughn in this but then like there's little bits and pieces like like malcolm is just perfect i mean it's, exactly yeah i agree it's amazing like in that, that cut at the beginning where it has like the woman screaming to him yawning on the train and the, the palm trees in the background just makes me laugh every time and um pete postal wait or however you pronounce his name as the big game hunter dude just like chewing up the scenery and being yes roland like, every single time. roland yes and he is amazing like amazing throughout and like mm-hmm. legitimately like a joy to watch from start to finish mm-hmm. um and like little individual scenes like the 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 uh trailer going over the cliff scene and how that was filmed practically and it was done just done so well and the raptors in the tall grass scene and stuff like that are yeah no I, I i agree i agree i agree 100 and then like the but just like the plot of like hey we're taking dinosaurs off jurassic park it was like you know just just go with the plot that was in the book it was better 
Uh, okay, yeah, I, like I, I'm not gonna lie. I have not know. seen. I have not seen the Lost World since. I don't know, maybe 2012. I have seen the original Jurassic Park several times, like pretty recently. No, we, we gotta watch it. Okay. We gotta watch it. We gotta watch it together. It's fun. But I have. Um, I only have positive book. like memories of that movie. So maybe like as an as an adult with you know fresh jaded yeah. eyes, maybe like I'll see something else. Let me watch it. As an adult, yeah, it, it, it has bits that are like have you read the book? Yes, I have read the book. So like one of one of the things that's a little bit that I, I know is a common criticism around it is like there's the one scene where uh Sarah Harding brings the baby T Rex that got its leg broken into the trailer to fix its broken leg. Yeah. And like it has been established that she works with predators in Africa and knows what she's doing, mm -hmm. but she brought an injured baby into her space, covered in its blood, knowing later on that T-Rex has some of the best olfactory senses of any animal that has ever lived. Yeah, you're yeah, you're right, yeah. <laughs> and in the book, they have they have another character um, a, whose name escapes me at the moment. Levine. Um, I think it's Eddie something. I think it's Eddie something. Eddie Brock. I want to say. Eddie, no, Eddie Brock and... is Venom, sir. <laughs> Eddie Brock Wait, is what? Venom. Eddie Brock is Venom. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, he is Venom. Um, um, I think he's still. I think it was Eddie Carr, and he's he's also in the movie. No, 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 no. There, there's a young kid character who isn't related to Malcolm. Oh, yeah, and then they combined uh, him with uh, the they girl. They combined him with everybody else. They, yeah. they took all the plot points he does and gave them to other people. Because, like, in the book, he makes the suggestion of, like, we can't just leave it here. Like, what? we need to help it. And Sarah Harding looks at him just like, it's a, it's a bipedal predator. It has a broken leg. It's going to die and be eaten by its nestmates. Like, like, sorry, but that's what's going to happen. And, like... It sucks, but like it'll help out its nestmates a little bit. Give them to me, and then like he is the one that sneaks it into the RV, and then they're like, "Oh my god, okay, I guess we have to deal with this now." Mm -hmm. So it makes more sense for him being like literally just an yeah, he's like, he's like he's like to... ten or something. It, yeah, he's. I, I don't think he's ten. I think he's supposed to be like late teens, like seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. No, I remember he like he was like, like he's supposed to be like twelve. Is he really? Yeah, or he, he actually no no. There's the girl and him, right? He's actually supposed to be younger than the girl. Yeah. He's supposed to be like around like eight or nine, I think. The girl is like fourteen. Really? Yeah, that's what I I, no, I read no, the book I twice, I, but I gotta reread it. I was in high school. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while since I've reread it too, and I have my I have my audio book for that, so I'll I'll read it at some point. Because my only hardcover of it is actually hollowed out and has a flask in it because my mom gave it to me for Christmas. <laughs> That's cool. Good job, mom. I know, right? The flask has like the Jurassic Park logo on it. Oh, uh, so it's a gorgeous leather-bound copy. It's amazing. Do you do you think Jurassic Park has damaged paleontology or has made it greater, or like you know it's more in the yeah? Hands down, hands down. Like I have. I have a lot of quibbles about the more recent movies, especially like the Jurassic World and Fallen Kingdom. I mostly like most of my like contention with them is more as a as a missed opportunity. I thought you were about that, to say McDonald's, and I was like, yeah, I agree. They're like the McDonald's of dinosaur McDonald's. movies. I just like I, I I watch Jurassic Park, and I'm just like, I really hate McDonald's. No, um <laughs> but uh so like i just see them as it's kind of a mix a uh, missed opportunity that mm -hmm. like there was a quote that i saw a while well apparently there's a quote that i heard a really long time ago but i've never been able to find it again so i might have just made it up i don't know that was um in um the jurassic park the original jurassic park did an absolutely incredible job of teaching audiences uh, uh, of teaching audiences of the early 90s the bleeding edge paleontology of the late 80s and Jurassic World did an incredible job 
teaching audiences of 2015 the bleeding edge paleontology of the late 1980s. Okay, I think I think the person who said that was um, actually Dr. Brusati, wasn't it? Was that? Wait, that was Steve. That might have been. I'm, I okay. I need to ask Steve then. I, I remember awesome. reading an article where he mentioned yeah, he was I, I talking read that about Jurassic somewhere, Park. And then I've never been able to find it again. Huh. I don't know. I'll yeah, have to I'll look it up, up later. Yeah, but um. I'll look that up. I'll I mean, just ask Steve. That's interesting because there's a lot of people who hate Jurassic World. Or park now? Yeah. Or both, actually? Yeah. Which I find very I, odd. I don't I don't hate them for that. I really don't. Yeah. Like, I I do see it as a missed opportunity that like I would love to see that. I would really love to see more accurate depictions of dinosaurs in mm -hmm. blockbusters to really popularize the new science around it. Mm -hmm. I think that would be amazing and really, really cool. But I'm not necessarily like they they don't have a responsibility to do that. Like That's true. on the one hand, it's like do they have a responsibility to? And, and then the other hand, do they not? It's mm -hmm. an interesting conversation. That if, if you're choosing a topic on a science, how much of a responsibility do you have to it to portray it correctly? Like most, of, like uh, another scientifically accurate movie, for instance, like The Martian. Okay. Um, most of the Martian is very accurate. Almost everything in the in the Martian is 100% accurate, with the exception of the inciting incident. Uh, a storm like that that causes damage like that is impossible on Mars because the atmosphere is too thin. So mm -hmm. everything beside the inciting incident is correct, at least as far as I know. I'm by no means an astronomer or an exobiologist. An, 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 ast an astrologist? <laughs> An astrologist. I'm by no means a cos. I'm by no means a cosmetologist. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, like, and and that's really cool. And it's and and the movie is better because of that. Mm -hmm. But also, like, like Star Wars isn't a bad movie because they don't accurately portray what that space combat's supposed to be silent, mm -hmm. like. Where do, where do you draw the line, basically? And, like, I yeah, as I said, I would love to see more accurate dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. And, like, essentially, my, my biggest, as, as you know, my biggest criticisms around the new movies aren't their dinosaur design or anything. It's that I just don't think that they're very well-made movies. And mm. they're, the characters are uninteresting. Their motivations are uninteresting. The the love story of the second one is literally just a retread of the love story of the first one. Yeah, um, I don't even know why like Colin Trevor like, wrote, just, wrote it like that. Like, why are you uh, revisiting uh, a plot point from the first that film? You finished. Yeah, that you finished again. Like, I get it. In real life, uh, couples break up. There's people who get who break up and get together all the time. But you're just putting a unhealthy relationship on screen for people to idolize. Well, over. I mean, Hollywood has a history of doing that that's true but it's yeah it's it's uh, uh, like i mean i i want to see i want to see my on-screen romances grow and change and evolve uh -huh. like like the finger dragon movies like gosh i want to talk about good representation of love stories and movies just ah oh, goals right I mean, there how to train your dragon had better dinosaur designs than jurassic world don't at me i'm just gonna <laughs> don't hate on me i mean <laughs> I'm mean. I'm just gonna drink my tea here for a second, just Okay, like regarding the designs, like I think at least like in the first two movies, there was a clear effort to make these, you know, dinosaurs animals, right? And you can really feel that in the yeah. way they move, in the way they're designed, the way they're yeah. colored. But then like with when it came to Jurassic World, I didn't feel the same way. Like, yeah. th th there's there's enough little details in the original Jurassic Park that if you if you know a bit about dinosaurs, you can kind of see that, like, wow, that might be a plausible thing that that animal would do, just mm -hmm. as a curious animal. Like, one, one of my favorite examples is the T-Rex the breakout scene, mm -hmm. that you can totally read the T-Rex breakout scene as this, like... The T-Rex isn't necessarily, like, it's not hunting, it's not trying to eat anything, it's not, it, it, it's just 
just curious. curious. Yeah. And like it's it's like how a, a curiosity bite for a great white shark will take your leg off and make you bleed out on the on, on the like, beach. On yeah. the beach. But like it, it's just like, hey, what's this thing? Hmm. Ah, guess it's not really food. And then swim away. And that's but it wow, why am I for some reason like having this shark in my head quote the friggin' Street Fighter movie? <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the day bison graced your village was the most important day of your life, but to me, me it was, it was Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> God, like, for some reason, great white sharks are M. Bison in my head, as played by Ra Raul Julia. I mean, but, M. Bison, um, but less evil. <laughs> it, for sure. Exactly. But, um, and then, like, it's just curious. But then also, if you, like, thinking about the animals that are, that are around for T-Rex, like, Basically, what this thing did was it was like it, it checked out this thing. It was like, hmm, this thing's weird. It's making weird noises. It has some lights on it. It has a hard back. Mm -hmm. Oh, other things have hard backs. Like it lived with ankylosaurs. Maybe if I flip it over, it has a soft underside. And then like flips it. Like it's interesting. And then it's like there's a little bit of a dynamic there of like, wow, this thing's behaving like a curious, intelligent animal. Mm -hmm. And then we have Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom where a baryonyx that looks way too much like an allosaurus um slash crocodile <laughs> slash crocodile is like trying to fight through lava being poured on it to eat people it's like that's that's not an animal that's a monster well, I feel like one of the biggest offenders too in that movie was when they're running, like it was the T Rex and the Carnotaurus. They're running yeah. from the lava. All of a sudden, the Carnotaurus starts uh -huh. assaulting the Cynoceratops, and uh -huh. you know, like there's a volcano erupting. What are you doing? Like they're animals. Like th that. That's something that, that like really did not come across in in several of the newer movies. Like. Actually, like, one of the... Uh, okay, I'll give a really good example from the Jurassic movies. Um, the clicker training of the raptors is really well done. Like, if you ask a, ask a zookeeper, you can clicker train and point train and, like, point target train pretty much anything that has a food response. Mm -hmm. So... You could 100% clicker train. The, I mean, the portrayal of it is a little sketchy. Like, he's clicking it all the dang time. Yeah, like, like you just gotta click it once, bro. Just yeah. click it once. Just, like, click click it once. Click it once. You're reinforcing bad behavior. Exactly. But, um, but like, you could do that, theoretically. Mm -hmm. Which is a really cool thing. And that's showing them as animals. And that's awesome. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's... I, I, I want them to reinforce that a little bit more. No, I, and, I, I, I They agree. also, like, they, they humanize them just a little bit too much. Like, the, the thing about, like, oh, Blue has too much compassion and stuff like that. Like, that just... <laughs> okay, I found that so funny because, like, Blue has the compassion gene. And I was just like, what? <laughs> we need to get the compassion gene from Blue to put it into it's... the Indoraptor. To make it compassionate. It's like, oh god, there's a meme about that. There, when it's like, I don't know enough about this to say that it's wrong, but I really feel like it's wrong. <laughs> but I guess, I mean, like, I mean, I guess selective breeding is a thing, and that's how we got bull, and that's how we got dogs. But like, so I guess. Yeah, but you think a I geneticist, think no a world-renowned geneticist who made blue would know what gene he used to make blue that would trigger whatever affectionate response blue gives or whatever like i mean blue wasn't even that affectionate in like the first movie like it abandoned you know chris pratt's ass and and you know like <laughs> yeah straight up yeah. abandoned him yeah abandoned him till like they started getting like rockets fired at him and stuff and i mean you want to talk about like, like dinosaur designs i hate the design for the indominus i think it's so boring i feel like while i don't like it either i feel like that was also the main the main point of the design essentially like it's supposed to be like this the corporate hollywood looking like design but i guess that also like makes it an issue because 
I get Colin Trevorrow was tr like, like when he discusses the film, he was trying to make, you know, commentary on how Hollywood makes a bunch of like churns out a bunch of blockbusters that don't mean anything. But in the process of doing that, he kind of just made his own box blockbuster that didn't mean anything. Which is, you know, it's so dumb. Like, why? You know, the, the, the like, Jurassic World doesn't say anything other than, you know, new, bad, nostalgia, good. That's basically the message of the film. Reject modernity, return the monkey. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it's like, I, I remember the first time, because I was so hyped. Mm -hmm. for Jurassic World. I was so hyped for Jurassic World. I didn't watch I didn't watch a single trailer. I didn't watch I, I didn't look at a single poster. I didn't want to know anything that was happening. I wanted to go into that movie completely blind. Mm -hmm. And I was so disappointed. I think that was partially like I should not have done that with that movie. But um like the the first time I saw the Indominus, uh, my my gut reaction was, "The hell's that?" Oh, it's <laughs> it's it's just kind of a big allosaur with four with four fingers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thumbs. <laughs> like it, like for a genetically engineered crazy mutant hybrid dinosaur, it looked too real. Like I'm like that legitimately just looks like a slightly more robust carnosaur. Do you do you think they should have made like gone crazier with the design and like, make it look like almost like Godzilla ish? Yeah, absolutely. If if you're if you're gonna have a core part of the movie be people are bored of regular dinosaurs, we want to give them something crazy. Mm -hmm. Make it crazy. Go all out with it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Like, I agree. They they picked they picked a design that was so safe that it looked like. It, I mean, Steve Brusati's working on uh, working on it right now. It looks like something Steve Brusati could present an SVP in a couple of years. Um, <laughs> and yeah, like it genuinely, I was just like, oh, it's supposed to have Therizinosaur this and like Spinosaurus that, and I'm like, then show it. Like, mm -hmm. don't have it just. Oh, it has slightly longer claws. I'm like, yes, yeah, some dinosaurs just do that. Like, make it look ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, and I feel like Jurassic World has like made like sections of the dinosaur like enthusiasts kind of like really toxic in a way with or like you yeah. know yes with the way they like talk about dinosaurs and they talk about yeah. Jurassic World like it's like real you know like like the science in it is real when it's like it's it's a oh yeah it's I've, a, I've seen that before a, yeah. um like I've seen that like. Oh, the the reason why the I, I've seen videos where it's like, oh, the reason why the Jurassic Park Spinosaurus looks this way is because InGen actually had it cross uh, crossed with a Baryonyx or a Tyrannosaur or something, and it's actually a hybrid of something. It's like, no, they had it that way because it was it, that was the accurate depiction of that animal at the at time. The time exactly. Like, that's the reason behind it or like oh my gosh or oh actually the um the velociraptors in the movie are, are well utah raptor or they're or they're aquila batar or something yeah. like that they're dinonychus yeah. i mean they kind of are they basically are dinonychus but bigger yeah i mean well like the only correct one for that is well i mean they kind of are dinonychus because they were Consulting predatory dinosaurs, the world by Gregory S. Paul, and he has Deinonychus. Well, actually, it was the Velociraptor Antaropus. Yes, yeah. it was the Michael Crichton was consulting predatory dinosaurs of the world that has Velociraptor Antaropus uh, as in, as opposed to Deinonychus. And I, I have a copy around here somewhere, but I think it's packed up with all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Found it. Found it at a used bookstore in Ann Arbor for like <laughs> ten bucks. So I was like, ah, yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, I, I I do like you know GSP's um, art, but yeah, some of his ideas are kind of kooky, kind of out there. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. But um, I've heard he's a really great guy and a really great paleon. Uh, like in so like he has some really awesome ideas. Like I mean, I do really I have to give him so much credit for like he was he was drawing feathered dinosaurs before it was cool. He for was sure. drawing feathered dinosaurs on dinosaurs that we that it's still very contentious to draw feathers on before it was cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, in Predatory Dinosaurs of the World that came out in, like, what, 88, 89? 
something like that. He has feathered coelophysis. Really? And it was just like, yeah, it's great. That's controversial. <laughs> it is controversial. And he has some really, really awesome ones in there. Like, I mean, he also like, gosh, you want to talk about some really interesting views of paleo art and stuff. One of my favorite illustrations is one from that book. It's mm -hmm. uh, a sauropod. I think it's an, a, a, an apatosaurus. It's a lateral view of an apatosaurus swimming, like full on swimming with uh, like five or six allosaurus swimming after it. Uh-huh. And it's, it's so cool. You never see that. I literally do not think I have ever seen, besides that illustration, an illustration of, like, conventionally seen as terrestrial theropods, like, swimming after prey in the water. Mm -hmm. Like, it's awesome. Like, That's really Gregorius cool. A, he's a cool dude. He might have been wrong on Deinonychus, but I will not badmouth his stuff. That's fair. No, I agree. No, I love his paleo art. I think I just think some of his ideas are kind of weird. But yeah, no, I, I agree for the most part. Some of them are, but I mean, that is it. that's what keeps the science going forward. That's what paleontology is. Like, there's uh, things are kooky until proven right, basically, mm -hmm. or wrong. And speaking of, um, sorry, you were about to say. <laughs> No, no, no. And I was like, and then they're kooky again. But yeah, go, go on, go on. I was like, speaking of things that, you know, you were hyped for, let's talk about Prehistoric Kingdom. Or like, let's so dinosaur game, dinosaur yeah. games in general, because I think the state... Yeah. We're living in this golden age, I think, of dinosaur gaming that, you know, we, we haven't seen since pff, late 1990s, early 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. Where I swear, like, everything had, like, they were... Turok and stuff. God, I remember Turok. I know Turok. Uh, there was you know, all the Jurassic Park games. Um, even all the Jurassic Park games. What else? Operation Genesis. Dino um, Crisis. <laughs> Dino Crisis. Oh gosh. Um. Oh. Oh, one of my first games that I remember playing. Uh, and I remember I, I saw this was mentioned in the chat a little bit ago. Uh, Nanosaur. Nanosaur. Um, oh yeah, yeah, Nanosaur. <laughs> It looks so bad. <laughs> I it never was, played Nanosaur, but yeah. I need to. I, I I definitely yeah. After this, I'm definitely just popping in the chat and we're we're chatting about this stuff because uh like for sure for you sure. You want to talk about some like ridiculous paleo art? Um, the there was there's concept art for Nanosaur two that uh -huh. has like they have this like way overly serious like stuff at the beginning that's talking about like in the future where dinosaurs are sentient and rule everything because that's the premise for that game um that like a group of rebel dinosaurs that they're like dino terrorists um <laughs> dino terrorists like, what like broke into the breeding facility and like stole all their eggs and there's there is this ridiculous picture of a lab on fire in the background with two Dilophosaurus. Like, one has, like, a scar over part of its face, and they're, like, holding eggs, and one of them has a gun. Like, it's just he has holding a, a gun. He has a gun? And it's, like, it's so well done that, like, it, it's, it's one of those things that, like, I'm like, wow, this is legitimately incredibly well drawn. Oh my goodness! Why did someone put this much time and energy into terrorist Dilophosaurus with a gun? Like, that's a gosh, but like that's a loaded I, question. I, I, love, <laughs> I love dinosaur gaming. I I love it. Um, grew up on it, and I'm a I'm a huge fan. Uh, I actually I did a presentation a little while ago uh, on Nanosaur. No, on on. Uh, the portrayal of dinosaurs in media in mm -hmm. general and there was and i talked about how like the the f arguably the first movie ever made was a dinosaur movie yeah the girl was it gertie the brontosaurus no that's the first animated movie was a dinosaur movie gertie the brontosaurus or gertie the dinosaur but the first movie ever Mm -hmm. uh it was 19 uh, well the first like well one of the first movies well it was the first movie with like big special effects mm -hmm. was like 1914 or something like that 
and I found it. I found a copy of it online. I watched it for this presentation, mm-hmm. and yeah, it absolutely wasn't the first movie ever. There were lots before that, but um, uh, and it was about like cavemen living with dinosaurs and fighting dinosaurs and stuff. And mm-hmm. there's a giant practical effect, like dinosaur that breathes fire in it and stuff. It was was it like an? Let me guess, it's an iguana with like horns on it. No, it was like it was like a ju- like it was to scale. Like it was oh, insane. Oh, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was just one of those like, you know, B like 19 like, you know, early 19 like ho- B movies with like, you know, they get they get this like, iguana or like, you know, monitor lizard. They slap some frills, horns on it. Oh, yeah. And then make they make it walk they around. One. They have that one where I, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, but it literally it's just like a, a crocodile and a tegu with sails like hot glued onto their backs and then they just put them in a box together and watch them fight to the death and it's like awful it's yeah and that's, they're like uh, yeah dinosaurs it's, it's yeah like, they just had some lizards kill each other on screen it was like oh yeah. god no we just had some animal cruelty on screen yeah that's a uh, no you know those those were some interesting times <laughs> hollywood and it yeah it's it's a thing. Oh, what was it? Oh, Dirty the Dinosaur was also in 1940? No, it must have been earlier than that. But, oh, God, I wish I could remember. It, it was a couple of years ago I gave that presentation. But, uh, I, I, so, I, one of the parts of the presentation was talking about the portrayal of dinosaurs, uh, of, like, how the portrayal of dinosaurs has changed and stuff. And one of the biggest things of, uh, the Jurassic Park really was a watershed moment. The, mm-hmm. It was like, if you look at things that came out before Jurassic Park and after, it literally just 100% revolutionized the way that we look at dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. And, like, w- the best way to look at that is, uh, I remember the way I presented it was, um, I was talking about all these old-fashioned movies, King Kong, like, I mentioned Godzilla and stuff like that. Uh-huh. And, because obviously you have to. And all of these B movies and stuff, and there, there's one like there's it's a Planet of the Dinosaurs, I think, where like there's people on an alien planet and they like have to fight dinosaurs with laser oh, guns. I, was say, weird I, and bad. I, I thought you were talking about the Star Fox game. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, it, it's it's weird and bad, but there's a hilarious scene where a guy gets gored by a by a Ceratosaurus, uh, not a Ceratosaurus, uh, a Ceratosaurus. Ceratosaurus. And he's just like screaming on its horn, and like it's all claymation and stuff. He's flopping around and gets thrown off a cliff, and it's the funniest thing I've seen in a really long time. <laughs> um, because the guy's doing like the most he possibly can for the screams, like in the recording booth, it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. But and then, yeah, the way I introduced it was like, and then a certain movie came out in 1993, and then I Carnosaur for Carnosaur, <laughs> I yeah. saw that coming. <laughs> You're picking up what I'm putting down. You know what I'm doing. And Carnosaur is terrible. I have not seen it. I have not seen it. I've seen all of them. There, wait, there's more are, than one? There's either three or four. They are horrible. Define horrible. Like, really terribly made. Hor- they are they're not b horror movies they're like c d e horror movies like they are <laughs> like c horror they are I, like i mean well do you do you know the production history behind carnosaur weren't they like trying to like rip off jurassic park or something yeah they were trying to rip off jurassic park and they wanted to do it so fast and so cheap it came out a month before jurassic park wow it was a ripoff that came out before what it was ripping off. A ripoff that came out before the ripoff. So wait, what's the story? Is it the same story? No, it's it's uh it it, it, it absolutely isn't like oh uh, they're trying to build because it, the only thing that was really known at the time was like hey they're making a movie based based off of like Jurassic Park and stuff like hey, or like some dinosaur. It, it might have even been at that point they was like they're making some di- Spielberg's making some dinosaur movie. Mm-hmm. And they were just like, ah, dinosaurs, go with it. I believe, it's been a while since I've seen the original. I believe it's like, like, I think it's just like, like mad scientist pharmaceutical science stuff or like weapon Mm -hmm. stuff. Like, I I forget off the top of my head, but it's so bad. But it, it, like, they are the equivalent to, you've gone to 
I guess back when movie stores were a thing, or you've seen those like knockoff bootleg movies. Yeah, where, like, oh, like at a blockbuster, Trans- and you're just like, I, I guess I'll watch it. You know? Yeah, or like, hey, this is Transmorphers or the yeah. Little Panda Fighter. The Little or, Panda Fighter. <laughs> or like R- Ratatoing or whatever. Yeah. And like it, it's that level. It's it's so bad. Um, it's hilarious though. We need to have a night where we watch Carnosaur. It's I, so bad. I am so down to watch Carnosaur. <laughs> I, I believe that there's literally. I'm I'm not sure which Carnosaur it's in, but I think that there's also a scene where a baby Deinonychus like, because they actually they call him Deinonychus in the movie, which is also. Oh, crazy. that's cool. I know, right? Um, but like, I I think it like like eats through the back of a seat where a woman's in the car and like pops out of her chest like a like a chest burst or an alien. And Yikes! It's, it's so it's so bad. But man. Yikes! Oh gosh. But yeah, and then Jurassic Park came out and then they just changed everything. But then ever since then, every movie is wanting to be Jurassic Park. Uh huh. And every depiction of dinosaurs is wanting to be Jurassic Park, even ones that don't necessarily make sense. Like, uh, the example I used was uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth. The one with um, Will Ferrell? No, that's Land of the Lost. Oh. I saw there was another Um, one that came out recently, but anyway. Go ahead. Yeah, they have Journey to the Center of the Earth, and there's a chase scene with a dinosaur that they... It's supposed to be, apparently, Giganotosaurus, yeah but it's just a t-rex with three fingers oh wait okay i remember this is the movie with the rock right dwayne johnson yeah no he's the main character i remember this there was like two similar movies that came out around the same time it was that one and land of the lost that definitely had the rock in it i'm not sure if the original did because i i I saw it back in like middle school oh the the the, the original did not have dwayne johnson (laughs) It didn't. Well, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of like the remake that came out 2008. Oh wait, no, yeah, we were both in high school. Yeah, I guess we were. I was 13. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it did, it did have the. No, no, it, it was did? Brendan Fraser. Brendan Fraser, thank you. Yes, ah, oh, Brendan Fraser. It's like it was one uh, of those action movie guys. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And it was terrible. And it, like, it's just the Jurassic Park T Rex, but it's white. And it has three fingers, mm-hmm. and it's terrible. Or the the Land of the Lost T Rex, where it's just it's just it's just the Jurassic Park T Rex. And um, I mean, also like Land of the Lost is weird because it has a like weirdly accurate Allosaurus in it, except it's the size of a T Rex. Uh huh. Um, and so like I even I I had uh I had a little bit in my presentation on this where i was i was proud of myself on this one where i had a little montage of dinosaur movies that came out after jurassic park Mm -hmm. that weren't jurassic park that were just copying the jurassic park t-rex i had like four or five of them and i had playing over it the audio of ian malcolm saying you didn't work for what you had you stood on the shoulders of geniuses (laughs) you packed you you patented it you packaged it you slapped it on a plastic lunchbox and now you're selling it you want to mm. sell it and i was so clever at that because i was like the movie's critiquing the ones that are trying to copy it and i felt so proud but um but then to tie this back to i go on very long tangents back to video games because video games are the one place that i've seen recently where dinosaur uh, like dinosaurs are really booming and mm interesting accurate depictions or not even they don't even necessarily need to be accurate one of the one of the versions oh thank you i see chat calling me brilliant thank you uh he's indeed brilliant but um (laughs) thank you oh my gosh but um uh one of the one of the bits that i one of the things i highlighted actually in my presentation on this was um monster hunter monster hunter world for sure like Anjanath, the monster in it. I mean, it breathes fire. It has weird wing things. It has a giant inflatable nose sack. But besides that, for all intents and purposes, it's a T-Rex. And they like, they accurately portrayed where people think that feathers could possibly, they gave it a feather cape. 
Mm -hmm. They gave it a, a Kuendodromius feather cape. They gave it a, what do you call this? They gave it a, like a keratin horn that can flare up, but we'll pretend that doesn't yeah, happen. Like, <laughs> they, like, they did, like, and a, a Pokemon has a... Uh, it's a Tyrantrum. Like, uh, Tyrantrum. And Tyrantrum and Tyrant. Like, I, I remember a while ago, I, I made a mention to my friends that I was like, we don't even necessarily know that if T-Rex had feathers, that T-Rex had feathers. There's a huge debate around it because whenever people start arguing about T-Rex, their, their brain just slides right out their ear and they just start yelling. Um, agreed, agreed. But, uh, that, like, it, it, it's weird that, like, I can't name a big blockbuster movie that has even tried to portray a feathered Tyrannosaur. Mm -hmm. But Pokemon has two of them and they breathe fire like and monster hunter has one and the like the the regular sword is as big as your entire body like i know and those, those aren't even like paleontology like focused games <laughs> which are no, and they're not. interesting and it's interesting and they're, they're using because one of the critiques i i'm sure you hear a lot is that like giving dinosaurs feathers makes them uninteresting it makes them unthreatening it makes them like whatever talking point people want to throw in there and I couldn't disagree more that, like, if you're boring with them, yes. If you do, like, the, the like, early 2000s, late 90s museum diorama setups where it looks like you just took a regular Velociraptor and tarred and feathered it, then it looks terrible. Yep, I agree. But if you, if you place things with intent and have a design ethos around it, then you can make some gorgeous looking animals that are scientifically accurate mm -hmm. or at least scientifically based they don't do, it doesn't even do, like i love anjanath it's amazing and vulgar anjanath and monster and in iceborne that's even cooler looking like it's tiger stripes and all that stuff and ah amazing incredible incredible design so good so much fun <laughs> no um, I, I agree yeah. i agree 100 percent. i love anjanath yeah but like it just it just takes imagination and the ability to like try and think about it and one of the ones that i really highlighted and this will really bring it all back is a uh, prehistoric kingdom mm -hmm. how they have made some of the most absolutely stunning dinosaurs i've seen mm -hmm. they're unbelievable they blow my mind no I, i'm so excited to finally play that game when it comes out um what are you okay so scott like you've been you've actually been a backer since 2018 what what caused you to back this game compared to because i remember okay we were talking earlier about mesozoica and mesozoica for me yes. was okay. it was yeah, supposed to be me. the spiritual sequel to jurassic park operation genesis what ended up happening though was um they basically took the money like the creator released an early access demo on steam and then mm -hmm. took the money, never got back to anyone, never responded to any feedback. Even the animators and modelers for the game had no idea what was going on. That was that was some sh some shit. Like I was, this was the first time I was really upset with you know like, cause I I you know I backed it. Like I, I paid my twenty dollars, and I keep in mind I was a broke college student at this time, so I was like. Mm -hmm. it's like you owe me money <laughs> you owe me money for wasting my time because i tried it and you know like there is some cool stuff in it like the fact that you could control one of the dinosaurs in your park and i was like there's so much like interesting like things yeah. you could do with this you know what i mean and it's like, just it's just not it, fleshed out it almost reminds me of oh what was what was that dinosaur game that was totally a scam that eventually became Isle, the Isle. Uh, Primal Carnage. No, no, Primal Carnage is. I mean, it's. Full oh, of, stomp, like, stomping it. lands, stomping lands. Stomping lands. Yes, I remember being excited for that one. Like the 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 dinosaur art was great. I loved the the concept for it and stuff. I thought it was like super cool. And then it was just like what was it that like the the devs like took all the money and like spent it on booze or something like that like I believe something that was, like, the they just they just kind of they, they just kind of dip yeah i don't know where they went with the game they just kind of 
or maybe that was a different game that I remember. Like, I don't think it was the like, booze, but they definitely did leap. But it has nothing to do with the the Isle is a whole different like ball game of oh, it's a drama. Different yeah, different whole ball kettle game of, of drama. Yeah, but yeah, like I remember seeing Mesozoica things. Like, so uh, like I got interested in Mesozoica and. Um, yeah, they still use, they still definitely do use some of the models in the aisle, but I think that they've slowly been, re like, replacing them over time. Yeah, they, they've, they've replaced most of them. Um, but I think I, the Therizina was originally from Stomping Land. Really? Okay, so I didn't even know like that the, the teams were even connected. One? Yeah, I didn't even know the teams were connected. Yeah. The big floofy tail one. Like, I, I know that, uh, the aisle, the aisle got its start by, I think, like, essentially buying all of the dinosaur assets from the artist. Got it. Oh, that that makes sense then. Like, yeah, yeah. And then they just slowly redid them over time to give themselves a little bit of more of their own identity. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. So like, I I got interested in. Uh, so I backed uh prehistoric kingdom essentially exactly from based off of what you were think of what you were saying of like it was the. Pre, it was the spiritual successor to Jurassic World, uh, Jurassic Park Evolution, uh, uh, Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. Yes, yes, yes. And I was a huge fan of, like, probably the game series I put the most amount of hours in over the course of my life is Zoo Tycoon. I loved Zoo Tycoon as a kid. Same. That and Jurassic Park Operation Genesis was like, I was like glued Me to too. my PC, Ugh. dude, as a kid. Gosh, I know, I know you were also a modder for. Jurassic Park operation. Yes, we I actually talked we actually talked about this with when Charles was on the show and ah, perfect. um yeah yeah so I mean like if you played the Walking with Dinosaurs expansion way back in like 2008 um yeah that was that was me you could find like the trailer on YouTube it's under like my old like you know to that like YouTube channel Andre J Cruz 95 on youtube it's 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 kind of like the trailer is kind of cringy but <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah i was a bit i was a mod i wasn't big but like i know a lot of people really enjoyed like using the mod and someone actually recreated walking with dinosaurs i think like using that mod i could be wrong and then really yeah oh. that, that was like a while ago it was like in the like late 2000s i don't know if he finished the series but it was a very interesting attempt mm. i mean i imagine cruel c would be yeah, kind of, yeah. I mean, I think you probably skipped it. <laughs> I would have skipped. Probably. Yeah, but um, yeah. So um, yeah. I mean, what do you what? Do, I know Prehistoric Kingdom has a lot of hype going for it right now. I have, I have not seen any gameplay of it yet. But okay, oh, I have. I've, I've been binging it. Does it look great? Does it? Does it do everything it you looks, wanted? It looks, it looks so good. Um, it looks like I know that this is this is throwing some shade, but it, it looks like everything. It looks like everything Planet Zoo should have been. Mm -hmm. And I I was super hyped for Planet Zoo as well, and I put a huge amount of hours into it. But like uh, Andy and I were talking a little bit before the stream started that uh, it was partially Planet Zoo was there. There were so many little things that were that were disappointing uh in planet zoo that like over time it just like drove me away every time i would be like hey i want to play this again and then it would i'd play it for like a couple weeks or a month or something like that and then it would be like wow this feels like a job i want to stop it was, just, it was just tedious like all the processes were just tedious yeah which again you'd feel like i would be like well i, I guess I, I i have enough of that at work i don't need to like sit down and do more work as my play it's, like it's a and... game you want to you want to relax and not think about that yeah but um so yeah i i remember one of the things that i really that really grabbed me about prehistoric kingdom at first as well was it wasn't just dinosaurs that like <laughs> i love dinosaurs dinosaurs are great obviously you can look around me at so many dinosaur things like within grasp but like right off the bat I remember them releasing like like hey we're gonna do mammals as well we're mm -hmm. definitely we're including mammoths and calicotheres and antelodonts and all that stuff we're in smilodon and all that and that's was, like, so we're cool. definitely including all of those. and i'm like that is great and and then they also were uh i know that they had some I don't know if these are going to get in the game at any time soon, but because uh, they haven't talked about any of them since some of the 
artwork at the beginning, but they also were planning on having uh, marine animals and like a full suite of pterosaurs. I feel like that's gonna be like like DLC or something at some point. Yeah, I could see it being DLC at some point. Also, uh, thank you about my Parasaurolophus skull. But um, <laughs> so it's yeah so that that stuff really grabbed me and i thought that it was a really cool idea to just like not just dinosaurs but other things as well and they had like a, it, and i hope that they throw in a, a few more before the dinosaurs things like gotta have you dimetrodon gotta have like gorgonopsis mm -hmm. and stuff true, like true, that true so that true that i'm uh, so the stuff that i've seen is yeah like i said it's everything planet zoo should have been mm -hmm. uh the like uh, so you, Andy, you've played Planet Zoo, right? No, <laughs> I have played ah. Jurassic World Evolution, which is not the same as Planet Zoo, but it's no, currently no. like it's the only modern zoo game I've played. And Jurassic World Evolution has, I had fun, but in the end, it's it doesn't have like. It's not what it could have been. It doesn't have the longevity of the other games. No, it really doesn't. I, I remember really... I oh God, I put so many hours into Evolution. I, I tried so hard to have a huge amount of fun with that game. And it is... Uh, and and I, I had fun with it. Like, I remember I made... Uh, I mean, like, one of the only things... Like, it's the exact opposite of, of uh, Planet Zoo. Mm -hmm. and i know they're both made by frontier that like planet zoo is like everything is so tedious and so time consuming and so finicky but you can be so detailed with it you can you can place every brick in a building if you want to mm -hmm. it's like it'll make your computer catch on fire but you can do it <laughs> it'll make your yeah. computer catch on fire Yep. And you can like like I've seen mods that people have made where it's just like, hey, I've recreated like my town in Planet Zoo, and it like it, and it's incredible and stuff like that. And uh, but then, but it's so difficult to do anything quick and casual, mm -hmm. and like making a good looking exhibit and just like if you put twenty minutes into an enclosure in Planet Zoo. It'll look like garbage and like PETA should be there trying to liberate your animals. Uh -huh. And but and then Jurassic World Evolution is like, oh my gosh, yes, I see in chat about the Deinonychus, but oh my gosh. Um Yeah. But uh so I uh, but then in Jurassic World Evolution is the exact opposite problem. We're like, they didn't release like terrain painting and like decoration they didn't add until, jack yeah until like what? a year later a year into development like oh my goodness it was insane but what were yeah, they thinking then, since then, yeah it, it was it was ridiculous like one of the biggest mods that came out relatively recently for uh jurassic world evolution was adding benches <laughs> actually like, why should why are players adding bench? Like, oh my goodness. But, like, I have such a love-hate relationship with that game because, like, I also, like, the the stuff that they've shown in there, that, like, the, the animals that they have in there, it, it really is, I was joking with my friends so much that um, uh, all of the dinosaur designs that are from ones that are featured in the movie are trash. Like, they're, mm -hmm. they're not the best. They're, like, they're fine. They're nostalgic. They're fun. But then all of the ones that aren't are, like, shockingly incredible. Like, a, one of my favorite dinosaurs in that game is their Edmontosaurus. I love their Edmontosaurus. No, definitely. Yeah, no, they're, they're, the Montosaurus in Evolution is is a lovely, 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 like, recreation of the animal. Same the with uh, the Giganotosaurus, Chef's Kiss. Like, Giganotosaurus, great. It's good. Mm -hmm. The... Well, okay, maybe not all of them. The Deinonychus is kind of kind of garbage. Like, not all of them. Like, the, the two exceptions uh, to that, really, are the Deinonychus, which, like, is so off-base, I genuinely don't know what they were doing with it. Um, why does it have a... Kind of, why does it have a crest? Why does it have a... Why does it have, why does it have a Spinosaurus tail? Yeah, that, 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 that too, yeah. I, I forgot about that. All I remember is the dumb-looking, like, boomerang on its head. What? Why does it have a boomerang on its head? Why does it have a... 
a spinosaurus tail. Like precisely, it has a new tail. It's it it's a, it's like they crossed it with it's it's like, it's it's like with the 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 head cannon people of just like oh yeah it's because everything's hybrid. It was like that with that one they they went oops all newt, and it was oh it's. <laughs> It's Did I say so frog it's DNA? So I meant newt. Yeah, it's 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 awful. But like, um, oh my goodness. But uh, like the rest of them, like I, I have a little bit of a love hate relationship with their acrocanthosaurus that they put in a bit later. Like I love the colors for it. I love the body for it. They got the head really wrong. But one of my favorite things about uh -huh. that is an another thing that like media never does. It's so cool. The Acrocanthosaurus in Jurassic World Evolution doesn't roar. Really? It okay, no. I never bought. I actually, that's like the one of the few dinosaurs I never had because I never bought that specific um, DLC pack. <laughs> oh, I bought that one. I bought all. I didn't buy all the DLC pack. I did. I didn't buy the Return to Jurassic Park one. Okay, I. But um, I, I like the Return to Jurassic Park one. But that's just me. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. But like. They got the body right. They didn't do like the paper thin sail like they did in the original Jurassic Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. Mm -hmm. Um like but like yeah, it doesn't roar. It actually it bellows like a like, like a, a crocodile. Owl. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, okay." Like that's it, interesting. Like all of them broadcast roar and stuff, like they'll just stand up and like scream and stuff and you can hear it across the park. Mm -hmm. Um but the Acrocanthosaurus like it it just closes its mouth and it just vibrates its sides like it's an alligator and it is so cool and so original and probably way more accurate because dinosaurs probably didn't roar mm -hmm. but like i love that i love the little attention to detail but yeah so the, getting back to getting back to prehistoric kingdom like i love the little things that they're doing and i love that they're also they're also kind of being really like modest about what they're doing i mean they're very that, like like you know they're they're slowly building this game up and i think that's the main reason why they don't want to over promise anything which makes sense no but but even in what they have out right now they're very much being modest that like one of the things that they the like in the alpha that they have right now is they mention that like oh we have six dinosaurs in the alpha okay no they don't they have like nine. Oh, really they, they, they have, there's more yeah. than the than the six that were advertised i didn't know that yeah because m several of them have multiple species that behave as different animals oh okay that makes sense i didn't know that like one of the one of the ways that they're doing uh the customization is that all the dinosaurs have different skins. I mean, you gotta you gotta have fancy dress up dinosaurs. Of course. So, all of them are amazing. All the skins I've seen are gorgeous. There isn't a single one I would say is bad for any of the animals. There, none of them look terrible. None of them look too over the top. Even the ones that are really bright and psychedelic and crazy and out there are still very plausible. Mm -hmm. And they're so well done that I'm just like legit. That like if you told me that hey that's what this animal looked like, I'd believe you. And for several of the different animals, they actually have the different, instead of different skins, they are different species. Interesting. Okay. Like the Edmontosaurus has three species. It has Edmontosaurus regalis, mm -hmm. which has the, which is from the dinosaur park formation. And it, that's the one that has the fleshy comb. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the one that you see in Jurassic World Evolution is Edmontosaurus regalis. Mm -hmm. And then they have a Montosaurus anectens, which is from the Hell Creek Formation, and is a bit bigger, and it has a different skull shape. Mm -hmm. And then they also have a Montosaurus cookpacensis, which is um, the dinosaur formerly known as Ugurnalik from Alaska, from the Prince Creek Formation. Uh huh. And they're all—they're not just palette swaps of each other. They're they different models. Different Interesting. Well, kind of. They're, they, I mean, they're different species of the same genus, so they look very similar. Yeah. But, like, Regalis is the only one, and I think it's even the male Regalis is the only one that has the fleshy comb. 
that we've seen preserved. Mm -hmm. uh, Anectens doesn't have that. Kirk Mackenzie doesn't have that. Um, or I guess Cook Mackenzie. There's no R in there. Um, and they, they have, uh, like, they're different sizes. They have different biomes that they live in. Mm -hmm. They have different uh they have different herd sizes that they prefer they have different ratios of male and female that they prefer so like they're legit different dinosaurs and it's really interesting like the the t-rex has one that it has one of its skins as tarbosaurus oh it's so it's, it's listed as tyrannosaurus batar or is it just saying no, it's actually, tarbosaurus? It, it, it's actually it's actually tarbosaurus batar but um for a little bit they actually did have it as this one's tyrannosaurus batar and then people, people got mad <laughs> and then everyone got mad and then, then they just changed it to tarbosaurus mm -hmm. but um so that one's the only one that has a, a, a one of the skins be an entirely different genus but they're doing that for a bunch of the different dinosaurs and i could legit see them doing it for even more that's interesting um, I mean, not even dinosaurs, different animals. Like, uh, they have uh, smiled, uh, like, they, they've had on the, uh, the species do uh, uh, dossiers, like, they have uh, Smilodon Fatalis and Smilodon Populator. Um, mm -hmm. They have uh, uh, the two species of Triceratops had two skins each. They have Triceratops Prorosus and Triceratops Prorosus. Yeah, uh, okay. They have the three they have three species well the three species uh, -huh. uh well i guess given what you think about it of allosaurus they have allosaurus well actually no they're actually missing one uh but they have allosaurus europinus they have allosaurus fragilis and, and they have allosaurus Max maximus wait what you caught me off guard i was like wait what no okay. they don't have gymadsenai they have uh maximus so they have uh what is oh, awesome. oh! So they combined Jamadsenai mm -hmm. and Maximus, or like, that's a, that's like the pet theory I've I've read from a bunch yeah, of people. Yeah, yeah. So I I could totally see them adding it because currently everything besides Triceratops has just three skins mm -hmm. for it. Um, like uh, Pachyrhinosaurus has three species to it. Uh, Edmontosaurus has three species. Um, uh, Camarasaurus has three species. Mm -hmm. Like. And it, it, it's incredible what they're doing to it. Like, I could totally see them adding different species for different animals. Like, give us Velociraptor Mongoliensis and give us Velociraptor mm -hmm. Um Like, uh, like it's super cool. I, I really hope that they do it, too. The one animal that they don't have it listed as right now, like, they have two species of Hyenodon. Like, I didn't know there were two species of Hyenodon, but, like, ah! But uh, the one that I really hope that they do it to but they currently don't have any plans for it, is uh the mammoth mammothus mm -hmm. currently all of the skins are mammothus primogenis which is uh the woolly mammoth i would love if they added in mammothus columbi so we have colombian mammoths and they're hairless the yeah I, I, I feel like they will i feel like this game is gonna get like i feel like they're gonna make a lot of money <laughs> they're gonna make a lot of money as I, soon I, as this is released on um i'll read this re released on steam one of the and one of the things that's really awesome with it is, uh, and I know that this was a complaint with a lot of people that were really into Planet Zoo, me included, is that all of the, the there were so many, there were simultaneously way too many options and way too few options that like every single, like you had to have like all of the poles in the game were all listed individually as like the four meter, like one meter two meter four meter eight meter increments and this is a slanted version they're all listed independently and this like all of the ones that are wooden are listed individually and all the ones that are this type of wooden are listed individually and all, mm -hmm. all of this stuff and it's so much and like sometimes you couldn't find exactly what you were looking for because there were so many things but they were also everything needed to be the exact increments that you had on there and the way they're doing like walls and building and stuff there is you place down wall and then you can select what material it's made out of. And wow, okay. you also, every single object in the game, well, pretty much everyone, at least all the building objects, you can fully transform at like, you can make them wider or taller or thinner or narrower. Like it's essentially just full on 3D modeling software at this point. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how on earth are they doing this it's it's insane they they're, really they're thought crazy. everything out yeah it, it's like it well it's it, 
my pet theory is like they were probably super huge fans of Planet Zoo. They were disappointed. And then <laughs> saw all the things that Planet Zoo was doing that were not the best. Mm -hmm. And then they're just doing it better. Like they have pathing that works. They have uh and also, at least at the moment, this might actually be a glitch because it is an alpha, but all of the um the guests can actually use anything as a path that's a placeable object that's mm -hmm. horizontal. So you don't need to make paths out of paths. So like I can make paths out of like bricks? Or is that what you mean? Or yeah. like benches? Rocks. Oh, uh, wall interesting. segments. Um interesting, interesting. Stuff like that. It's it's super cool. And the way they're doing the aviary is really cool too. Like I'll gush about their micro raptors. They're so pretty. Um Ah oh man, so pretty. I, I can't wait for them to throw other small little flying critters in there, like little small pterosaurs and stuff. And you can delete the aviary around them so it's open air, so you can like make a walk through aviary and ah. Oh, That's really cool. It's amazing. Alright, wait, okay, so I haven't seen any gameplay, but can the dinosaurs kill people and eat people? The dinosaurs can't eat anything right now. They, literally, all they do is walk around and roar every once in a while and go to sleep. They, they don't oh. even have anything for feeding. Okay, because I was about to be like, yo, when I start the game, I'm going to see if I could recreate Jurassic Park real quick. <laughs> it's, it's aggressively in alpha. Like, okay. it, like, yeah, the dinosaurs don't have any... like they, Their collision isn't fully implemented. Like, they'll walk, like, the guests will walk straight through walls and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um the dinosaurs will just kind of like walk around and not even pay any attention to any of uh, to each other and then just like like every once in a while roar or go to sleep or run for no reason and just sit down they like they just randomly move so okay yeah it's very much in alpha right now but um oh another cool feature they have especially for someone who likes park builders and stuff every single dinosaur when you even uh, like you choose a skin and stuff for it but every single one of them will grow up to be a different size and have a different like skew like, and stature. yeah slightly different yeah i saw that i saw that that's very interesting oh, it's beautiful it's beautiful and the, the level of differentiation is like shocking uh-huh like it's not just like tiny little details like i saw someone just line up a bunch of lambiosaurus and just like wow some of those are legitimately noticeably smaller and duller than other ones mm -hmm. interesting like, that's super cool I, I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. I know it's, and uh, the worst thing is I'm, I, I hate playing games in early access because I always end up spoiling myself for mm -hmm. them. So I'm definitely going to wait to play Prehistoric Kingdom until it reaches like 1.0 full release. Okay. So, you, so <laughs> you'll get to watch me play it then, Scott. <laughs> yeah. <That's> uh, <laughs> uh, like, I mean, I, I kickstarted it so long ago that like I have early access to it. I'm not going to play it until it releases fully. Uh-huh. But, you're yeah. A, uh, man. You're looking, real, looking forward to that one. So you're like, real, you're real trooper, Scott. I wouldn't have the discipline yeah. to, to think that way. I've just been like, yeah. alright, time to play. Like, I mean, I've been... Uh, like, I do that with a lot of games. Like, uh, been really waiting for uh, Subnautica Below Zero to come out. Because, mm -hmm. like, man. Ah, uh, I loved Subnautica. And it's been in early access for like what like two three years i still haven't played subnautica but um oh, i heard it's gotta, i heard it's a gotta. really good interesting like underwater game what i what i am excited for right now and what i do have is path of titans mm -hmm. and i don't know if you played that yet i haven't yet i know you talk about it but i haven't played it yet okay it's it's, it's once again it's it's also in early access but the developers are it, incredibly hard working like this they were working during christmas and i was like take a break what are you guys do and take a break they released like update an update on christmas and Just go home yeah exactly but <laughs> yeah exactly and like you know they're they're releasing bug fixes like every day and um there's always like a major release at least every month but um right now it's like the dinosaur game i'm eyeing because i i played the aisle for a while um, I, I played mainly like 2016, 2017, and the game has not really improved. If anything, it's regressed, I want to mm -hmm. say, in terms of development. How so? Path, um, I mean, besides the community drama, which involves like one of the devs being, Oof. um, yep. yeah, a creeper. Um, yep. you know, there's like, they've re basically torn down the game and remade it like t three times, 
I've heard. I want to say. Yeah. And, you know, they keep removing functionality that people like just because the developer, the, the, you know, the lead developer has a huge ego and he wants, um, he has a very specific vision for this game, right? Which is fine to have, but it's like, if you're going to release, if you have a specific vision for your game, like release it in that state. Yeah, and don't be upset when people are mad that, or when when people don't like what you've done. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, basically, like it went from like being like a pretty fun game, especially because like the mods for the game I think were the best part of the Isle. There was so many mm. modded servers that I had so much fun playing on, and I have so mm. many fond memories playing the game because of those modded servers. And then one day. He just he just didn't want mods in the game anymore. He wanted people to play the game that he intended it to. So oh, mod, okay. yeah, that is, that's a way to kill a game. Exactly. Right so then basically God. he nuked mods one day, and that's the last memory I rem like I have of really like playing the game because I was like, that's it. You took out all the fun that I had with this game. I don't like playing on the official servers because of how like unforgiving. Like you, like with Path of Tide or with the Isle. You really need to have no life in order to, like, be good, like, you know, to have, like, you know, a big dinosaur, right? You gotta hide in, like, a bush as a, as a you know, Tyrannosaurus for, like, eight hours to reach full size. Even then, like, you know, six hours of progress would go away just like that just because you got ambushed or, you know, you, you went into the wrong neighborhood, right? And I, I get it. There's some people who like that. I personally want to have time to do other things in my life which while I like Path of Titans is basically an MMO survival RPG where if you die you get punished but it's not as severe you don't lose your progress you still keep your character and mm. that's what I want every once in a while I just want to be able to hop into a server as a you know a Deinonychus or a Latini Venatrix you know chill with some mm. people hunt you know and then log off and you know don't like I don't want to have to worry about losing all my progress that I've spent you know months building up you know what I yeah. mean and that's what the yeah. aisle is and if yeah. people like for people who enjoy that more power to you you know that that's that you know you it's your right to have fun doing what you want but for me I just couldn't have fun with the game after the um yeah after the they took mods out so yeah 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 i mean i mean some games can be very fun if they're punishing like that but i mean you still should have some sort of like permanent progression like i mean like i love playing the hunt showdown and that game is literally just an anxiety attack that's masquerading as a video game <laughs> and, uh i mean that that game has permanent permadeath and like awful stuff like that i mean it, it's a great it's a great simulator for uh um uh, it's uh, getting shot in the Louisiana bayou and dying face down in the mud while a zombie tries to eat you simulator 2021. 20, um, it's great. I love it. It makes me like seriously afterwards feel like I just need to go lay down for a bit. But like, I don't want every game to be like that. I, I want some games to be like, like uh, we were talking about before, like Deep Rock Galactic, where it's just you play as a dwarf and you and you can go get exactly you explode exactly fight some bugs and you do it drunk because why not and you have a dedicated button to hold your pickaxe above your head and scream rock and stone and it's a, a blast and mm -hmm. it's so much fun but like like you, you don't you need a bit of balance and you shouldn't necessarily have it be like so ridiculously over the top that like it's, it's months of progress down the line down the drain like again it, it's making games like it's a job and exactly i i have a job for a job i i want to play some games that are fun i mean sometimes i just want to sometimes i want to like just turn my brain off and just like listen to a podcast and play something really low key uh -huh. and, or sometimes i want to just have a bit of a power fantasy where i could just put a where i could just play doom or titanfall 2 and exactly like, exactly the best thing that has ever lived um yeah man i love video games Exactly same. Um, what time is it? Yeah. All right, so we're actually um, up for time. Um, oh so my goodness, Scott! Wow, yeah, went. it went by so fast. Oh my goodness! Um, if you want to see what I've my Utah Raptor, this is I've been pretty, pretty this much time. pretty much it. Gorgeous. Thank oh you. Oh my goodness! I've been resisting on commenting on it because, like, wow, as we keep talking about really fun topics, but like that is. So 
stunning. That is stunning. Absolutely. I know. Like, I was like, at first, I was considering not like like just re- completely restarting the pa- the watercolor painting because I was like, I don't know how this if this looks okay. I don't know. It's so good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, I, 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 I'm glad I stuck. I'm glad I stuck with this murder bird. Um, I hope yeah. the head. I hope the head is big enough. But yeah. Um, well, I mean, from the perspective, it looks yeah. like it totally is. Once again, uh, thank you so much, Scott, for coming up on Drawing with Dinosaur Comics. How can people reach to reach you? How can they, you know, contact you if they have any questions? So you can find me on everything at Mr. Dr. Professor Johnston. Um, even though I, I do not have a PhD and I am not a professor, so one only one of those titles is correct. But um, <laughs> I was an old SpongeBob joke from like back when I first got my steam. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm at Mr. Dr. Professor on everything. And uh, the only difference is on Twitter, I think I'm missing the last O. So it's M-R-D-R-P-R-O-F-J-O-H-N-S-T-N on Twitter, but everything else is S-T-O-N. And yeah, so I do a lot of science communication stuff. I do my live streams for i do my live q a live streams on mondays on trx dinosaurs page where i answer everybody's questions and you can come on there i do them for i mean i always say i do them for a half an hour but andy you've been on there i do yeah. them for 40 minutes Thank 50 you. minutes um, Go ahead. You, sometimes you take up the whole time slot <laughs> they're fun uh, i enjoy them um and so I'll, I'll do those on Monday. So I have one coming out, I, I guess, tomorrow at the time we're, we're recording this. But you said that that's much it's going to be released much later on. Um, but I mean, for the people watching, it's going to be yeah. awesome. It's going to be tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, I do my own Q&A uh, on my own page on Mr. Dr. Professor Johnson, where I put up the question sticker and then I answer everybody's question that I can. That's up there for the... 24 hours. I call on the Wednesday Q&A, but I do most of my answering questions on Thursday, so mm-hmm. eh, whatever. But um, we hope to like have you come by, ask some questions that you're curious about, and hopefully you'll learn something and have some fun while you're at it. And I do my Fossil Friday posts on Fridays, but that's about it, what I do. So if you want to reach my stuff, you can follow me over there. Awesome. Well, anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful night. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. We'll have more chill art time. And then um, on Sunday, we're going to have another guest. And um, you guys will see me. I will announce this um, on Instagram. Anyway, have a great night. Good night, everybody. Good night.